Okay, this is high tech fuels, um, hydrogen fuel system that we build for diesel engines. I'm not a professional videographer, but I'm going to try to give you some video just to sort of show you what it looks like and how it works and some of the features the system has. This is a Merit side step box. This is a system that we sort of try to build for semi trucks. Um, truckers tend to like these boxes and it works really well for us because we can store all the system inside it. Um, it kind of protects it from the elements and rocks and road debris. <clears throat> and it's a real nice look, nice clean package. Um, basically something that can be bolted on, um, wired up and can start working right away. Um, we vent the box on both sides just to kind of give it some airflow. This is the back side of the box, which would be the downwind side. And then the front side of the box, which would be facing towards the front of the truck. Um, you can see the vents here on the side. We also put a uh, fan inside the box and we vent that fan through the front. Um, again, our High Tech Fuels logo. And this is a saddle box built by Merit. Um, right now, the system's running. You can probably hear it. Um, we're pulling around 39 amps. It's just a 12 volt power supply. We have it hooked up here in the shop. And then over here on the side, you can see the gas output, which I'll give you a demonstration of that in a minute. Um, but this is the outside package. Um, again, we like this box uh, for semi trucks, but really it's pretty, um, it's a system basically we can mount in any kind of box. We've done some underbody boxes. We've built boxes um, for tractors um, that fit on the back of the tractor. Um, but a nice clean look. I'll um, open it up for you in here in a second and show the inside of it. Okay, now to take a look at the inside where all the action is happening. Um, basically, we have our tank here where we keep our electrolyte pollution, which is basically distilled water. Um, this is a system that uses um, potassium hydroxide just to make the water a little bit more conductive. Um, as you can see, the round cylinders are the cells. Our system was basically built, and we've been doing this for about a year now, with big diesel uh, engine type trucks, tractors, construction equipment. We've done some um, well motors, things like that. So our, our system isn't really for cars or trucks or anything like that, uh, pickup trucks. This is a heavy duty system um, built for a lot of abuse, basically. Um, the sales uh, tubes are made out of uh, 304 stainless steel tubing. Um, we have a pump here in the bottom. That's a 180 degree pump that The system, the fluid temperature really never gets above 130, but we went with 180 degree pump just to sort of over engineer everything. Um, and again, down here we have a fan. That fan puts out about 180 feet of air per minute. We have a nice bit of breeze in there to go along with the um, air flow you get from the truck moving. Um, PWM, this is a constant current pulse width modulator. We use that to control amperage. You know, two of the main things about hydrogen fuel systems you really want to control um, is amperage and heat. Um, we control our amperage with our constant current pulse width modulator. We basically can dial in any amperage we want. Right now, I've got this one dialed into about 
3940 amps, which you can see here on the 12 volt power supply. It holds it steady at that amperage. Um, the systems that don't have PWMs, what you'll have is amp climbing. Um, it'll start off 20 amps and go to 30, 40, 50. Um, just as the system heats up, and you really don't want your amperage climbing like that. So we control that with the PWM. The other thing we do is we have a pretty um, exact formula on our electrolyte mixture, which also helps us control amperage. But the system is extremely stable on amps, and we can dial it in to whatever amps are, you know, optimal on the system, you know, depending upon the whether it's a truck or a, a, a big engine truck or something a little bit smaller. Um, heat, again, with venting of the box and again the fan, we're able to keep the cell temperature down as well. Typically, in here, you're going to have cell temperature at 120 degrees, so you're going to ambient temperature outside. Obviously, if it's 20 degrees outside in the winter, the system will be a little bit cooler than in the middle of the summer, but we try to keep the temperature range somewhere between 80 and 110 degrees, which is plenty cool enough for you know, all the stuff we do in the box. Here in the back, you see another tank. Um, you're going to get some condensation in the line, you know, the hydrogen line. So we trap that condensation in this uh, second bubbly tank. And if you notice in the back, we have a uh, expansion valve, which is just a safety feature in case there's any sort of backfire in the engine. That um, expansion valve opens up and allows any sort of um, um, back pressure explosion to escape there. So it never it has really no. Um, there's no way for it to get back to the cell. The, the, Second bubble tank is full of fluid, plus it has an expansion valve, and then you've got your main tank, which is also full of fluid. So that is, keeps any kind of backfire, which is pretty rare in a diesel engine from ever getting back to the sales. 